Mark here, another great Mark 2.0 podcast. Well, my next guest, the legendary Charlene. You remember her from the song, the hit song, I've Never Been to Me. Charlene, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, I got this weird little thing. Okay. Let me get rid of it. There you go. Okay. It was a little thingy that came up. Um, Yeah. I'm excited to be talking to you guys today. It's awesome. (laughs) And I'm going to throw in that Charlene has uh, revealed that her favorite country in the world is England. (laughs) Yay! So I'm going to be doing my best East Ender accent. East End oh. London, a bit of Cockney yeah. thrown in. As as <laughs> I look, I do. A little yeah. bit of Cockney. A little do you have a spot a of tea? That's <laughs> right. It's just a little. I can't do it too great, but it's not bad. Oh, you got it down. You got it down. A little, just a little bit. <laughs> Always got my tea. See, let me do yeah. tea. Mm-hmm. Pull the teacup up there. Let me see. <laughs> you, get Gordon, <laughs> drink the tea. Were you? Did you just have a teacup in your hand? No, no, I'm having coffee. I'm in Canada. Oh, you there you go. See? I'm trying to fit into Canadian culture and no one drinks tea anymore. So I'm what? having me coffee. There we go. Do they drink not... coffee? Do they drink coffee? That's right. Now, but let's not get too off track here. Okay. Because you were had the most spectacular song. And I didn't know that it first came out in 1977, yeah. and it did nothing. It, it did went, nothing. I didn't even know it was out. And then five years later, all of a sudden, I, how many years has it been? I don't know, but I still know 90% of the words. I can probably put in the bridge. Although yeah. it, sounds a little, it sounds a little foolish coming from a bloke. So tell us about that. Why didn't it go in 1977? I'll, I'll tell you my take on that. Yeah. Okay, when we recorded a song in the studio, we, we had the talking bit in it. Hey, you know what paradise is? It's a lie, a fantasy, da, 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 right? And yes. Motown was like, oh, take that out. That's so corny. Nobody wants to hear that. But that not being in it, I think it didn't, the penny didn't drop in the song. The penny didn't drop like, wow, that's what it means. You know, it was like, it was like, that's, I, I believe that that was why the song never really took hold. Along with timing, along with whatever other else things. But I, I believe to this day that because that talking bit was out, people didn't connect with it. It was like, didn't connect. Because if you listen to that, the whole song's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. The woman is ironing her baby's clothes and her husband's shirt to go to work. And she's singing all these words in her head because she's, you know, she'll never do the, she'll never do any of those things. But then when you say, hey, okay. Then when it says, hey, you know what paradise is, it's a lie. We take it away from, her and give her the real reality of what life is and what life is about the reality of life of love you know truth is the baby you're holding the man you fought with this morning the same wing going to make love tonight that's truth that's love sometimes i've been that we go back to the fantasy that we go back to the metaphor been to crying for unborn children that might have made me complete and that that whole thing but I think I think the reason why in, in 1977 it didn't happen was because that talking bit didn't come in and people didn't quite go, wow, now I get that. So I got a lot of that yeah, from yeah. Fan, fan mail. People said, oh, my God, you know, when that talking part came in, it just made me cry because it was then that I really realized the truth of the song, you know. Well, but I'm that's gonna go back to my Canadian accent because I can't keep this going all night. Oh, so, a- back to my regular voice. <laughs> Dude, mm-hmm. That's so good. <laughs> now, now the question I the, the thought that occurred to me, and I'd be interested in your take on it. Okay. I was thinking generationally in 1977. I don't know how old you were, or you were in 1977, but 
the the big the the, the boomer the boomer population at yeah. that age they were still pretty young yes and yes. by 1982 that that boomer population now they were there were moms ironing in their 30s and 40s yes yes yeah there were so i looked at it from a generational point of view i think you're right i think you're right i think both a thing looking at both aspects of that is spot on you know and i think i think you're even more right than what i said about the talking bit coming in um because that generation could relate to that lyric you know well i can tell you something hearing you say what you said about motown and them saying get rid of that schmaltz yeah that stuff i will admit i listen to that and i go oh my like get 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 out the shovel we're get out get out of yeah we're smearing it on but at the same time i also have to admit that i go a little god i'm a you know it it, it chokes you up a little bit yeah it it it, 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 it does hit you yeah and it even does though you sit there and you say oh my god that's you know that's gonna send my blood sugar level through the roof <laughs> I want to tell you guys a funny story really quick. David Letterman, David, David Letterman show, uh, Kenny Hurst wrote the music to I've Never Been to Me, was watching the David Letterman show, right? And they talk about, oh, what can you do to get rid of an unwanted guest? What can you do? Make a really bad dinner, you know, have them be allergic to cats and the cat sits on their lap. He goes, when nothing else works, play the worst song ever recorded. <laughs> Any plane I've never been to me. <laughs> oh, oh man. But you know oh. what? It was kind of bravado because at the end of it he said, he said, I really do like this song, but this song does get a lot of back and forth, love, hate, love, hate. <laughs> what do you think? You know, it's like there's so much emotion in it, there's so much truth, and it's kind of shoved in your face, you know. So yeah, it was very, very funny. He said he almost fell off his seat. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh. I think it was P.T. Barnum who said, there's no such thing as bad advertising. And I bet you as soon as he said that, a few people went out to the record store when the record and store still that existed. Song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. you know, that's such a big statement. It was so powerful. Let me ask you something. Talk about how you uh, got into doing a duet used to be with uh, Stevie Wonder. How did that come about? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you my take on that song. Right. Ron Miller <laughs> wrote the lyric. Hated, he passed away in 2007, but rest his soul. Hated the world. He hated the world. He hated everything that was, that was anything of the world. So he gets up and he goes, hmm, let me see. Let me write a song where I can, I can absolutely put Charlene on the stage and she will be in the firing squad where everybody wants to kill her. <laughs> that, song, that song got me so much bad mail. It was like, oh my God. But Ron was very close with Stevie. Mm. And Stevie was very close to the Motown offices, which were on the 16th floor at 6200 Sunset Boulevard. That's where all the big people, all the all the Motown recording artists, the writers, the publisher, a little demo studio would be. And, you know, Ron was there and we were all, you know, congregating in there, you know. And how did I get off that thing about saying he hated the world and never been um, used to be? Oh, Stevie, Stevie would come in all the time and he sat down next to me and he sang me, I only have eyes for you. <laughs> like, are you kidding? It was very cute, very cute. But we all congregated in that, in that office. And, it, you know, after I've never been to me, he thought, let's really, really pound it out now with a really song that says everything that we want to talk about and all the things that are wrong with the world, okay? And we did, and I thought it would be great because Stevie was on it with me, and I thought it would be great, but boy, it belly flopped. It absolutely belly flopped. 
And I think my the most heartbreaking moment for me when I was in England, I opened up a magazine and it said, Charlene, the magnificent failure. Wow. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> You're gonna be kidding me. <sighs> Well, my, my part, there was a lyric in that song that that caused some radio stations to ban it. You're you're 12 years old and sex is legal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, Superman was killed in Dallas. There's no love left in the palace, meaning Kennedy. Someone took the leader Beatles lead guitar, John Lennon. Have another Chevis Regal. You're 12 years old and sex is legal. Your parents don't know where or who you are. And then it went on. Hero okay. of the ball game, to, to the loser's hand, to have a failure only make, didn't try, you know, raped their minds with television. It was like, oh my God, Ron, he was such a brilliant writer, but, you know, he really believed that this would be such a massive hit. Right now it would be. Right now, I think it would. It would with me and Stevie. But... Uh, it was way out, way before its time. It was way before its time, and it was seems very hard. To theme. Seems uh, to be a theme with you. I said that seems to be a theme with you. Nineteen seventy-seven. Yeah. You had to wait five years. That's right. You know, it just needed more time. I know. I know. So, it was just the wrong timing. It was the wrong timing. It was sad because I. I mean, I. Oh my God, I. Never Been To Me was the most amazing, amazing song. I still love singing it. I still love listening to it, you know, and I and I, I just have so many incredible feelings about the song, you know, because it was my life. I mean, I was going through a really bad divorce with my first husband when I heard the song and I just fell apart. And then when I sang it, I think all the emotions of my life came out in that song and it was incredible. Well, let me yeah. ask you something real quick. What about the uh, song It Ain't, it Ain't Easy Coming Down? Oh. That was off the soundtrack to uh, Last American Virgin. Now, yeah, were I you know. selected to sing that song or did you write it? Or No, Ron Miller and Kenny Hirsch, same uh, duo. He did Never Never Been To Me, wrote that and all, and all the other songs that were on that album. That song was so beautiful. It was so perfect. It should have been in place of used to be. It should have been, you know, that was a beautiful song. Even though it's another sad, negative, kind of sad song, you know, about, you know, ain't easy falling down, coming down, you know. I was sand, you were earth, you know. And, but it's a lot of picture, beautiful picture, metaphor pictures, you know, beautiful in the song. It was great. What I was going to ask, because you, you you alluded to something uh, where here reading in a paper, a big failure, yeah. you achieved a level of success that even some of the biggest recording artists in the world now don't achieve. You hit an absolute pinnacle, and it wasn't just the United States, it wasn't just Canada, it was Europe, it was Scandinavia. It was all global. over. Yeah, and, it's, yeah, it's still all over. Yes. And that's a level of success that very few artists ever achieve in their life. Yeah, you're right. And, yeah. And you're way up at that pinnacle. Yeah. It, it's almost impossible to replicate it. Yeah, no, I think and you're right. I think you're right, Gordon. I think, I think you're right about that because, you know, I forget, you know, I've, I've been out of the music scene so long you know, but I do forget that I've got so many fans still out there. It's huge. It's like, what? You know, and, and the royalty statements that I get showing where the song is still playing and selling. I'm like, this is insane from China to, to Moscow, to Russia, to, to everywhere. Name a country and it's there. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> it's incredible. What? My, my question was, though, you know, critics criticize. That's their job. They want yeah. to, you know, the world hasn't changed. They want they no. want people to like what they're writing. Yeah. And so you're an easy you were an, you're an easy target. But that's not something that's easy to deal with. I no, mean, we it's all not. have egos. 
Yeah. And, and how did you how did how did you cope with that? I coped with that with going in a very dark place with depression. I, I took it all on myself. I blamed me. I blamed that I'm I'm not a real out there kind of person. You know, I mean, right now I'm very you know kind of talkative and real animated. But back in those days, I was very quiet. I was a cowgirl. I used to ride horses and show horses and and I came to sign my Motown contract in my cowboy clothes <laughs> you know I was like that's what I was I was very simple you know I was very simple and I had a very bad marriage so I was really kind of tucked away in myself you know I wasn't way out there I wasn't allowed to be a big big person you know so I think in that I it just kind of I kind of imploded I kind of imploded you know, I'm better now, but, you know, wow, it's, this industry is hard, you know, it's hard on people, you know. Yeah, what, now what happened when you got out of uh, Motown? Because you're no longer associated with Motown, right? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Um, when I got out of Motown, I, I just got into other things. I just mm -hmm. had to change my, my gig. I had to change what I was doing. I had, I got involved with sales. I started selling and I started just being a fan and I had my kids, I had my children, my beautiful children, you know, and, and that I became a mom and I, I loved it. I still love it. My kids are grown up now, but I still love it. You know, I was a mommy. And, and God, it was just great. But I still always had all those tapes of all those songs that are recorded. And my kids knew them and they used to sing along and they used to go, oh, mom, you know, you were famous. You're this, you know, you did, 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 did. And I said, I said, I know, I know that was a very good part of my life, but it was a very hard, hard time of my life. Very hard. You know, but I met so many people. I met so many incredible people. And I remember going to a big party in, in 2000, 2009, I think, 2008, 2009, a party of a guy who used to do a, a, a version of I've Never Been to Me, like singing, cussing in it, and alien, and, you know, cussing, a lot of cussing, crazy. It was like a crazy show where he did all these women songs. Women and never been to me was the highlight of it, right? And there were movie stars there, like Brittany Murphy and and David Spade and and Neil Patrick Harris and all these big stars that were like, oh, and the girl who did Big Fit Greek Wedding, she they they would come up to me and go, oh my God, Charlene, I'm so glad you're here, and I'm like, wait, 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 really? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And then, and then um, oh, another big star was freaking out. Helen, Helen Hunt, you know, yeah. Helen Hunt. Yeah. I oh love, yeah. I love her. She walked up to me and said, Charlene, so good to meet you. And she calls her husband over. Honey, come here. This is Charlene. <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I, I couldn't conceive that because I knew them and I didn't realize I, you know what? I really kind of, I kept, I kind of separated myself from that you know it's like if i used to make a joke and say it doesn't go with my furniture in my in my heart in my soul it's great but it didn't it didn't really it did, didn't identify me you know i was i was a horse lover i used to show horses i even brought a little baby horse into the world so i was very you know earthy and very you know that kind of thing but I, it, it wasn't me it was like the music industry and all that and all the writing getting flying on concord airlines to new york city from london to do good morning america with one of the Bee Gees, and that wow. was like oh my god that was amazing but it, it's like it didn't it's like it didn't settle in me you know it really didn't settle inside of me you know i was you know, I was grateful. It was wonderful. And the people I met was incredible, but, but, but it just was very hard. I think all the, all the stuff that I went through, you know, with the label and everything just kind of really took a 
you talked about your experience meeting Helen Hunt. Yeah. And, and, and it's a, an interesting dynamic, something I can't even imagine because I've always been the fan when I've met a famous person, an athlete yeah. or an actor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always the fan. Right. And I, that must be the weirdest dynamic because I'm sure, I don't know if you would feel the same. You've been around a lot more than I have. But if I see a, if I was to see a Helen Hunt or a Paul Reiser when their show was on, I'd be yeah. like, wow. I'm yeah. meeting. And then oh, to have God. them turn around to you and go, wow, I'm meeting you. Oh my God, I That's know. Kind of <laughs> it, was very, it was very hard to encapsulate that in my brain. It was like, it was hard. It was hard, but... It was awesome. It was like, oh my God, oh my God. And there's other people I've, I can't remember, but I just, you know, uh, what's his name? The guy who does all the, oh, what's his name? Oh, the, you know, he's a huge actor. Yeah, I was yeah. playing piano at this friend's house and he was there. And he said, Charlene, I love how you play the piano. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Jagged Edge, have you seen the movie Jagged Edge? Hmm. Yeah. Um, with with uh, can't remember his name. Oh, let me see. Hold on. Mark's got his phone. Yeah, let me check. Oh, Hold oh, on. Good. Yeah, get your phone. Yeah. Jagged Edge. Okay. Yeah, the man, the the star, the guy starring it, the man. The well, 1985 well, film. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Who started it? Glenn Close, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, Jeff Bridges. Oh, wow. Okay. I went up to his house and he had a big, remember the, remember the triangle days when you sit under a triangle and you're, it sharpens your razor blades? <laughs> the pyramid power. The pyramid, there you go, the pyramid. <laughs> he, had this, he had this big pyramid in his, in his back of his house. And, his wife Susie brought us up there, and you know me and my friend, and, and it was like wow. But he was so neat. He he loved the way I played piano. I was like, oh, that's so fun. Thank you. So, wow. And Sydney Portier, what, what's wonderful. Me and my husband met him. Oh, what a gracious, what a gracious man. Oh, class. Now, you know, listening to you talk, I feel like I'm talking to a neighbor down the street. Yeah. 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 None of the pretense. None of the. Oh, whatever pretense is the probably the best word. Yeah. 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 Very, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're very down to earth and everything. That's what I'm. Yeah. That's. You know. Yet, yeah. You must still get recognized. No. No. In England, I did. In mm. England. Yeah. All uh, right. Right. Yeah. But but you know what? When my when my song hit number one in in uh, in England, was hit, I was recording in a studio in 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 uh, Herefordshire, right? I was recording an album, and I had to do Top of the Pops that night, and so I had to come down. I had to come. Listen, this is crazy. I had to come down in a cab, right, from Herefordshire, and I had no money on me. So I I said to the I said to the um I I asked a cab driver to stop. I went to the payphone because there was no phones then. I went to the payphone. I said, I, you know, I said, Jeff, or my manager, my manager, I said, you've got to come and meet me at this area where you can give me some money to pay the cab, right? And the cab driver heard me say that. <laughs> he said, you don't have money for me? I said, no, my manager's going to bring it to me. He's bringing, he goes, yeah, right, lady. Get, can you get your bags and get out of the car? I said, no, please, please don't. I had my sweats on. And I said, I'm going to be on top of the pops tonight. And he goes, yeah, sure you are. Get out of my cab. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my manager brought How the money. How did that end? What? How did it end? How did it end? Did, did well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, how did well, everything work out? <laughs> so crazy i i got i got out i gave him the money and he said okay but and he, and he left you know and i have the, my bags and i'm waiting for my manager to come and pick me up and take me to the studio where i can change and i can god it was so embarrassing but what i'm getting to 
I reached number one, right, on the pop charts, <laughs> number yeah. one. And in my little house that I lived in, there were some girls outside of my house waiting to see me. And oh. I opened the door, I said, hey, come on in. And Jeff, my husband, goes, what are you doing? <laughs> I invited all the kids in. <laughs> kids came. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, I know. I loved it. And I signed a little piece of paper for them, love Charlene. And they're like, oh my God, we can't. They were just like, I can't believe, I can't believe that you brought, brought us in. <laughs> so it was, it was so fun. It was fun. It was, you know why? It's mixed fun and drama, dramatic, fun, crazy, scary. You know, I mean, all kinds of, what can you do? <laughs> it's life. Oh. Oh my I, God. I got like 10 more things to say, Mark, but I don't want to dominate. No, go mind. right, go right ahead. <laughs> I want to ask, when did you decide to go with the, I think it's called mononome, mononome clatcher or whatever they call it, having the single name? I mean, you've got Cher, you've got Sade. Oh, Charlene. Yeah, just yes. I just I don't know. Just we just thought it would be good to have instead of Charlene D'Angelo or Charlene Oliver. D'Angelo is my maiden name. I'm Italian, you know. Yeah. Charlene Oliver. I thought let's just go with Charlene. I thought that's fine. That's okay. It, it oh. was perfect for that song in particular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the video? Have you have, have you guys seen the video? Yes. In that yes, beautiful. Yes, I have watched the video. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm in my real wedding dress too when I'm in that show, okay. in that video. Yeah, it's very black and white, very. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Very image. And what have you been doing now? You know, what have you been doing lately? And do you have any plans going forward? Are you going yeah, to. Yeah, I do. I do. I've been doing, I've been collaborating with a writer in England named Paul Davis. He is a good writer, good piano player, good composer. And we've been doing it over Zoom, okay? And we, I started a song called uh, um, Fairy Tale Life. It's really cute. It's a real bouncy kind of da 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 da, da. You know, it's a really cute song. And I, I said to him, let's write this together because I've just got half the lyric and I need to finish the thing up. And he took it away and listened to it, took it and then came back with it in his studio. It sounds brilliant. You know, with him there, I got to do a vocal. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I got to find a studio here. So I've been writing with him and <clears throat> I've been writing, you know, all kinds of songs. I've got hundreds of songs that I've written. Some are part written, some are fully written. Some I've got, a, I've been writing very dark. I have a song called Broken Society. That's kind of like, wow, it's like, whoa, people go, oh my God, that's like another used to be, but not quite as clever. It's not as clever as used to be, but <clears throat> it's a very, very dark song. It's very, you know, I kind of write, I've been writing books. I wrote a book, I wrote a book called Orphan Train, which is about, it's, it's, a, it's a, a historical fiction about a commandant who's, close with Hitler. He's one of his top people, right? And he falls in love with a beautiful Jewish girl. He falls in love. He's passionate. He's crazy in love with her, right? And so he has all these things where he's mean and horrible with her. Anyway, she falls pregnant with him and he takes her out of the, out of the gutter, out of the, you know, the slave places and puts her in other homes with a nurse and stuff. And she has twins she has twins and she has them and she wants to get them out of Auschwitz she wants to get them out actually Ravensbrück Ravensbrück is where all the women went and they had babies and a lot of the babies were you know you know done stuff to them and everything anyway so she had her babies and and they got their baby she the nurse helped her get her babies to the to the orphan train to get them out. And the book all takes place 25 years in the in the future where the two boys grow up. And it, it's really a good book. It's, it's you know, they, they were tattooed on their ankle. She wanted them tattooed the word freedom in Polish, 
right? Because she was a Polish Jew. And so the whole story revolves around them having this tattoo and they don't know where each other is. And they they find each other eventually through a painting that she was an art, she was a very famous artist. Her mother was. So they 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 find each other through a painting that she did that uh, her name is uh, uh, Christina, Christina Nava was her name, is her name in the book. And she paints this picture and the two boys just have this painting in their head. They don't know why, just the mom prayed, 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 you know, so they find each other and it, it's so incredible. And then I wrote a little kid's book called The, uh, War, the, um, the Life and Tales of Herman the Worm. And that's just a cute little fun book. And then I wrote my my life story, Charlene. I've never been to me. <laughs> right? That's a horror book in itself. <laughs> oh, come on, jeez. No. <laughs> okay. It's okay. got to be a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster. It has to it be. Is. Uh, now you're singing now, and uh -huh. I. I as I've gotten older, I've noticed my my you know my vocal range has changed. Mm. Yes, uh, <laughs> and uh, how are you? How, do you find your your voice was very lilty in Never Been to Me? I don't have that I, lilt anymore. I don't have that lilt. I have a kilt. <laughs> Well, I don't have, I don't know what I have. My voice is deep. I sing in a man's key. Like, yes. like, like a, a male singer will sing and I will harmonize with them. Oh my gosh. I've got so much more power in my voice now. I can sing really blues. I can sing with Sam Cooke. You know who Sam Cooke is? Yeah. Yes. My baby's coming home tomorrow. Ain't that good news? Man, ain't that news? Baby's coming home tomorrow. Ain't that news? Man, ain't that news? You know, I can sing really with a, with a guy singer, a blues. I mm. love doing that. So, but Sam's no longer. I gotta go back in time. I gotta go. I want to go back in time to 1977. Okay. Because you just reminded me of another singer who splashed onto the scene around that same time. Okay. Bonnie Tyler. Bonnie Tyler. Oh yeah. Oh. Kim, oh my gosh. Kim Barnes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. They have that low gravelly voice. That really interesting. It's good, you know. Oh, and another That's one amazing. that I people remind me rem, say they my voice reminds them of is uh, the country singer. Shoot. Oh my gosh. Is it Kim Kim Carn? No. no. She's in the country. Yeah. Um Marriage Cape and Carpenter? No, no. It's another female that sings that has a low voice. Hmm. Um Reba? Reba. No, 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 no. Um I don't remember. I don't remember who she is. But yeah. it's it's I, a, a I know she's got out. red yeah. hair. Uh -huh. I know she's got red hair. Hair and she's real country and she's got Bonnie Raitt. Body, body Raitt. Bonnie there Raitt. we go. Yeah. Okay. If you just said red hair, I knew. Yeah, Bonnie Raitt. That's it. People say that I kind of sound like her a little bit, which is which is good. You know, I mean, I I don't have that high little lilting voice anymore. I miss it. It's so it was so sweet. It was it was more you know it was young and it was beautiful and. You know, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But now I've got more of a gruff, really, really passionate, passionate song, passionate voice. So earthy. Earthy. Yeah, oh. very earthy. <laughs> Throw a little dirt on it. <laughs> so, so for fans of yours, whether it be Never Been to Me or anything else, Yes. If they want to follow, if they want to follow you, if they want to find out about your books, if they want to find out yes. about your upcoming singing projects, are you are you on the web? Do you have? I or have, not really. I have a web designer who has been telling me he's building it, and it's been a long time, mm. and I don't know what to do. I, now that I'm doing all these interviews and stuff, what's your website? What's your website? 
I don't know. I don't have one right now. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I wish I did. It's so frustrating. You know, have you heard my new song, Why, Why Can't Time Stand Still? No, I haven't heard it either. You haven't heard that? No, I haven't heard it yet. Where is it on? YouTube? It's Spotify? On it's on, yeah, it's on Spotify, YouTube. Um, yeah, Why Can't Time Stand Still? That's got my lower range. Mm. Oh, and I wrote that about my kids. I wrote that about my children. Um, oh, are you trying to get it? No, no I'm, yeah. I'm I got it written it down. down. So I can listen to it as soon as we're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Definitely. It's, you know, it, it's all about my kids. You know, seasons okay. come, seasons go. Through the years, I watched you grow. You know, and it's like, and part of it is dedicated to Lady Diana. Hmm. You know, her beauty and and the way she touched people and the way she, you know, she had so much love and passion for people. Sure. So that was kind of about her as well. Very good. Yeah. Um, well, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, oh, you're, thanks so much. Oh, that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yay. We'll have to do this we again sometime, that'd Charlene. That'd be Go so ahead. good. What? what? We, we release some endorphins into your brain. Yeah, no, you, did. Did. you know what? You're right. Yeah. You're right. An excitement that comes when you're excited and you feel good. It's like it, all the little. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>